All right. Good good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very strange. Uh, let's just say the stream got COVID and got badly infected, but we are here for round three of the Trover F1 series, and as you can see, the race is already underway here at the Marina Bay Circuit in Singapore. Of course, we couldn't race here in real life this year, but we're going to bring some great action here. CGRG Sparks took pole position, and uh, he's just getting a slight gap to Fira with Waters in third, Jordan in fourth. And IGK in IMOT. And I'm just going to introduce my co commentator Unfortunately, um, the great man George himself has some terrible technical issues this evening. So, alongside me this evening is a man I know very, very well. The seven-time PSDF1 champion. It is, of course, Connor, a.k.a. Big C. Yeah, good evening, everyone. It's good to be here. I mean, I meant to be engineering, but desperate times and desperate measures, Mark. So, at least we've got something going and I'm just going to get in the lobby now. So, yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so uh, Singapore, of course, you've plenty of experience of racing here. Uh, very much uh, a, a mental test for the drivers. And, of course, um, usually one stop prevalent here because it's a very long pit stop with a 37 mile an hour speed limit. So, uh, you know, just your sort of experience of racing here, Connor, uh, what, what sort of uh, impressions have your BDG guys got going into this race? Nixon Mateo and Ruben representing your squad. Yeah, I think obviously Singapore is always a big challenge. You know, the street nature of the circuit, and obviously those soft tyres, those soft tyres drop so quickly. So just managing them and getting the strategy spot on, keeping out the walls is very key. So yeah, my guys definitely, you know, struggling a little bit in qualifying, but I think, you know, Nico's making his work on those medium compound tyres, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, traditionally, Connor, um, the alternate strategy, is it can be very powerful because, you know, those who are starting on the softs have to go very long on the hard compounds. And then those who, you know, start on the medium compound then can then switch to, you know, a fast compound at the end of the race and can be, you know, a second a lap faster. So, you know, is there anyone outside the top 10 you expect to be pretty strong at the end? Um, I'm not... <laughs> Honestly, I don't have a clue what's going on in the race so far, <laughs> so I don't really know. But I think keep along, Jordan and Nico are the ones to watch on those mediums, so they'll go along and have a good set of fresher parts after, afterwards. But yeah, I'm just going to ask Joe to leave the lobby, so just give me a couple of minutes. No, pro no problem at all. So we're going <laughs> to so carry on with the action. DRS has been enabled, of course. It is uh, dry under the spectacular lights of the Marina Bay circuit. And uh, so far, we've had a few pit stops. Um, as uh, Con Connor mentioned, the softs do wear off very quickly. Um, just to mention a couple of things. Um, CRG Gamer got damage um, early on, um, as did uh, Gavin uh, Tetero. That's why they're quite far behind the back. And we saw NWS Waters making an early pit stop. Not sure if that's that. And more drivers into the pit stop, including the pole man, CRG Sparks. So plenty of drivers making pit stops early on. But the advantage is for Sparks, he'll coming out in nice, clean air. And they're going to go on the hearts. And, you know, he'll be aiming to go pretty deep into the race. But those starting on the... On the medium tyres, you know, a one stop will be easier for them when when they go from mediums to hards. So uh, Sparks, if he is going to be one stop, he's going to have to be taking those an extremely long way uh, to get to the end of the race. So your race leader at the moment is uh, VSR Jordan, uh, who's one of the few drivers in this series so far to have taken part in all three races. He did, of course, disconnect in the first race in unfortunate circumstances. Had a much better race uh, last week. But uh, this is a very different circuit to... Uh, Silverstone, of course. And we've been racing here since 2008. The Singapore Sling uh, would have been uh, even more bad news for these bigger cars, but uh, long gone uh, modifications to that particular track. And of course, the first race in 2008, infamous for, you know, the the Alonso gate or whatever you want to call it, when Nelson Piquet crashed on purpose, allowing Fernando Alonso a very advantageous safety car uh, and then went on to win the race. And then it turned out later that Nelson Piquet had been ordered by Flavio Biratori and the rest of the Renault team to crash on purpose. So uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully we don't see any of that, given, you know, perhaps there'll be a temptation <laughs> from some of the clubs. Although I think they have much more honour than Flavio and co. had at that particular day. So I am sort of trying to get my bearings on what's happened in the race so far. More pit stops coming in, and that is uh, IGK Iamotti 99. Coming into pit stops as we see S2V Jorpa in the racing point, closing in on SHZ, name changer. Now, of course, the big news from IGK's side was that uh, IGK Jill has decided to, you know, quit the, the squad. So his replacement this particular evening 
is uh, the owner of IGK, IGK Raikkonen, who's uh, looking to make an impact here. But it has uh, certainly been what was a promising start for IGK has kind of gone up in smoke to a degree with controversy off off the off the track and not the kind of result on the track they mm. wanted. So uh, yeah. now I do believe Connor is now back, having gotten to his engineer seat. He's going to be multitasking. He's going to be very much the Christian Horner on Sky as you uh, sort of speak to him on the grid. So um, I suppose I suppose we should just go on to the engineer side of it first. So uh, your impression, how are the BDG guys doing so far? Um, Nick is up there in a solid P2, of course, slightly out of position given some of the pit stops we've seen so far, but doing a pretty decent job holding up uh, S2V Zocalat. Yeah, I think at this stage it's about closing to Claudine and just making sure the pace is up up to speed to really extend the gap to some of the earlier hard runners. In terms of Rubon, uh, he sort of missed the checkered flag because there was a bit of, let's say, pit lane uh, traffic between the two boys. So he lost that a little bit there and his air car blocked spark. So that wasn't ideal. So yeah, at this stage, this was about Nicholas was really recovering and setting some good lap times to really try and overcut some of the early hard pitters. And obviously, when we're on the fresh hards, hopefully we can make some gains in that regard. So... Yeah, it's going to be busy, busy. But yeah, I'm here to commentate as well. So hopefully there's a bit of good racing you know, Singapore. A lot, very long race, 31 laps. And it seems like nearly an hour long. So hopefully we'll see some on-track action as Jocelyn has closing on, on Nico right now. Yes, but not quite close enough uh, at the end of Raffles Boulevard to get the move done. So maintain position of P2 for Nicholas Mateo. Although they are beginning to close in on Jordan. Jordan had a significant advantage over over Nicholas Mateo earlier on, but um, seemed to have lost a bit of time the last couple of laps, perhaps the mediums getting past their best tyre wear can be fairly severe here. There are a lot of curbs you have to attack here with aggression to get the lap time, but that can sometimes have an effect. I say, oh my goodness, BDG Nicholas Mateo getting very close to that to that curb and then smashing into the wall on the left-hand side as they cross the Anderson Bridge for the seventh time. And Zocalat with a name changer to find, name changer, feeling the need actually just to pull out the slipstream of the two cars ahead just to get a bit of clean air just to stop the effect of that dirty air. And we're just going to have a look at those out of position. That's Fire Air, CRG Gamer, and Te Alonso. They're very close to each other as they cross the Anderson Bridge once again. But these guys don't want to be battling too hard because it may ruin their strategy later on. Yeah, and interesting on the last lap, uh, Nico did a 0.6, a 39.6, compared to Sparks on the fresh cars with a 39.4. So it's important those guys behind do really uh, pit, uh, make the post of the pace of the yellow flags, Mark. It's name changing. Name yeah, changing. yeah. Wing see. damage in Sector 3. I'm not sure if he had uh, contact with somebody. Um, he was trying to get out of the dirty air we saw, but maybe un overcooked it a little bit too much. He's going to now come in for a painfully long pit stop. So that's severely compromised, and he'll have to be hoping for a safety car. Zocalat, a little bit closer now onto the back, needs to get that exit out of uh, turn four to try and get onto the Raffles Boulevard with as much pace possible. But to be fair, next to with a pretty good exit, but it gives him half a chance. But now he's going to have to cover the inside. Zocalat would go to the outside, all oh, nearly making contact. But to be fair, that was robust defending from Nixon Matera. I'm sure he'd be pretty pleased with that, Connor. Yeah, great defending there from Nico. They're very experienced defending there. So, yeah, I'm just going to give me a minute, Mark. We're back. OK, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Connor Horner there uh, on the uh, Renault pit wall. Uh, but I'm sure, unlike the real Renault uh, team principal, he will not be getting a tattoo if one of his drivers gets onto the podium. I'm, I'm commentating now, so I need to give you a little bit. Okay. Nico. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. And the guy behind you has no errors, so use more of your errors. The dude's going to get attacked. Tell him to use more errors. <laughs> Well, we, I, th I think we could hear some team radio words. from Connor there. I don't know if he realises. Yeah, Chocolate has no words. Has no words. <laughs> Not sure if Connor realises he's being uh, broadcast. I'm sure the other teams will be hearing that. Yeah, That'll okay. be useful information. But uh, Zocalat indeed has okay. low ERS. Still trying to put the pressure on the back of the Renault uh, Nicholas Mateo. Yeah, he's pinned. He's pinned. Okay. okay, good luck. Good luck. I, I, I speak to you after. Yeah, it's fine. I have to speak to you after. So Jordan into pit lane then from from what was uh, from P1 and uh, Zocalat still trying to put the pressure on uh, Nicholas Mateo. Let's go further down the order just a little bit. 
Uh, let's see, Leon Bentley uh, in, a, in a solid P7 at the moment. Still a lot of furious battling going on for P14, but that could be important later. As I say, they may look miles behind, but because it's such a long pit stop here, keep an eye on those guys. Here comes Zocalot then. This is for P1 for the time being. This time he gets the inside late on the brakes. Oh, slight contact, but forcing off the Renault slightly. Outbreaked himself a little bit, and they're going to go side by side into turn seven. Oh, s nearly nearly getting squeezed into the wall. Nixon Taylor is trying to fight. It's about, oh, could be more contact again, but again, they're still side by side. Watch out for Jorpa. Right behind him, we'll go on board with Jorpa to get a perfect view and Nixon Taylor maintains the position. What's a battle between the Renault and the Racing Point drivers, BDG and SGB going head to head for the time being, but they are really costing themselves a lot of time, which has allowed the likes of Paris Burrell and ST8 Aero to catch up. With Ruben, mm -hmm. the other BDG driver just behind. Leon not able to take advantage of all this battling. He's now fallen back to three seconds and being caught rapidly by Falcon Nardi. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if Nico has a little bit of damage because his pace doesn't seem too strong at the minute because Jordan in the lead had some damage, Mark. I don't know if you saw him pick for a new front wing there. So No, I did yeah, not. Nico, yeah, so Jordan did have damage. And that's why he's dropped well behind the field. So not ideal there for VSR. Uh, just looking at Nicholas Mateo, um, doesn't seem to have um, any damage, but here comes Zocalat. Zocalat then has had enough of following the back of this Renault. He's going to be trying to get a bit of an undercut. So now as more pit stops coming in, I think the likes of Falcon, who has now got past F Fire Rare, is now going to be an interesting watch. So I'm going to keep an eye on him, but I think they will get ahead of the racing point at least. So let's go back to the front because now Jorper, the other SUV driver, can he get ahead of Nicholas Mateo? Although not of an exit like that, Nicholas Mateo will scramble ahead for the time being as Falcon sets the fast lap of the race into the 1 minute 38 we go. And he has um, now got ahead of Zocalat. So the undercut seems to be fairly significant at the moment. Zocalat coming out straight into traffic. I think we'll just have a brief look at that. Yeah, now he's behind IGK Iamotti. Let's see if there's going to be any movement here. So many close battles at the moment. And here comes fresh tyres for Zocalat. This is an important move to get done early on. And he's going to sweep past the ITK driver up into P15. So that was important for his race. Because he'll be surely trying to aim to get those tyres to the end. Uh, we're on lap 10 at the moment. Lap 31. Do you think Zocalat can get to the end on those tyres from this point? Oh yeah, comfortably. I mean, Sparks is looking to go to the end. And he, he's already done four laps on those tyres. But I have to say, so far, it's quite clear that the soft pass strategy looks to be the best strategy. They've maintained track position and Sparks has got a really nice, uh, let's say, buffer. Well, him and Walters have a big buffer over the rest of the field. So maybe, let's say, the medium hard doesn't look like it's going to be a good strategy. Because look where Jocelyn and Jordan have came out. They're just nowhere near. And having three or four laps fresh of hards isn't going to do much good. I think it's the hard medium guys could be the ones to watch. Yes, no, certainly. And there's oh, more pit stops now. And Zoppa and Nicholas Mateo come in. So Zocalat getting that move done. That could be quite important for his race because um, he's now caught onto the back of NWS Benny very quickly. So if he can get ahead of Nicholas Mateo and Jorba, that could be pretty good for his his chances for it. Now, don't forget, top 20 all score points. So every point counts here. Finishing a race can be very important for the team. Now, I will just mention the championship standings. In terms of the team standings, CRG, of course, two victories for VSR Blizzard. Some, a huge haul of points gives them a significant advantage at the top. Uh, with VSR their closest challengers. But at the moment, it looks like CLG Sparks is going to aim to make it three wins out of three. So he is the net leader at the moment in this particular race. Just having a look at the pit stops. The top six currently on track have not. And yes, I did say I meant CRG Blizzard. Sorry. <laughs> That's uh, PSL F1 uh, days uh, coming back there. So I do apologize, uh, Onyx, for that uh, little slip there. But uh, I wasn't expecting to be Lee commentated tonight, so you'll have to uh, forgive uh, a few uh, mistakes here and there. So, uh, so oh, and the yellow oh. sector two, and that is Gavin, who's out of the race, uh, uh, and he has hit the wall. And unusually, it is a VSC. Now, is that going to be any mm. advantage for the likes of Paris and 80 Aero? It depends how long the VSC stays out for, but if it stays out for another 30 seconds, they could get a bit of a cheap pit stop here. Yeah, they could, but I'm, I'm afraid it won't really, really really work out because they'd have to go on the mediums or the softs, and the mediums just won't get to the end from this point. So Yeah, it's not really going to do them any good. No, it, it, well, I think they'll stay out, but let's just see what happens, I guess. Well, any um, of them tempted to go for an alternate strategy? No, I think they're going to just stay out for the time being. Uh, now, um, just, just to mention Zocalat, 
Uh, Nicholas Matea and Jorpa, of course, came in for their pit stops, and they've actually, they have actually been jumped by Zokolat. So Zokolat got a huge undercut on those two. So that's worked out really nicely for him. Um, he's in P12 at the moment. Nicholas Matea and Jorpa came out 16th and 17th, respectively. So we're just going to have a look at IGK Raikkonen, who is battling hard with IG Nars, who's just overtaken him at Turn 1. Just going to have a look at uh, the other Brutal Democracy driver. who And your man, Ruben, is about to make a move on Aero and nicely, comfortably moves up a position. Yeah, another clean manoeuvre from Ruben. To be fair, you know, he's always got good race pace, good race track. He's just so qualifying. You know, we were 17th. So, you know, it's really difficult to really recover from 17th. But it's a long race. And let's be honest, if there's a safety car, a timely BSC, around that, that 19, that 20, go on those mediums, you're in a great position at the end of the race. Yeah, no, I think I think they're in good shape. You know, uh, I've seen it so many times in Singapore. Those who start on the hards, who go deep into the race, they have a huge advantage if they can, you know, not lose too much time fighting at the front. And I think in some ways they are, they're, they're being smart about this, the likes of Aero and Ruben. That You know, they're, they're battling to a degree, but they're not sort of, you know, getting each other away. They're just sort of overtaking each other with, with DRS on the Raffles Boulevard. And, and, you know, you don't really lose any time unless you sort of go side by side through the falling corners at the end of Sector 1. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I'd be mean, interested to see how Sparks gets on, because he's obviously coming up to a bit of traffic, the likes of Raikkonen and uh, IGNRs. So let's see how Sparks gets on with Walters, Gus Mahan, who's really performing really well for NWS. I think Walters is probably one of the most underrated drivers in the community. He's had a great run of form, got many points finishes, an old podium in PS Left 1. And, you know, he's fighting for the victory against one of the you know, hottest talents in the community in Sparks. So, yeah, Walters doing a great job so far in the Alfa Romeo. Yeah, he's, uh, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, of course, um, Sparks, uh, you know, I'd say you could definitely say Sparks made his name in the community on the last game, F1 2019, really rose up to prominence, I think, you know, because on F1 2018, where he was sort of starting out, he didn't really have that out and out pace. And then 19, it was just a dramatic improvement. And now he is, you know, one of the you know, most powerful forces in CRG at the moment. And he's rapidly catching Raikkonen. So it won't be long before he's on the back of the IGK driver, especially as IGK is unable to get past Ignaz again. So it's going to be key now for Sparks if he, whether he can clear those two cars ahead because that, that could really be a key moment for his race. And uh, speaking of BDG, just yeah. seeing overtake from ahead of Benny, who seems to be out of position a bit, doesn't seem to have much pace in the NWS driver at the moment. Yeah, I think the likes of uh, Gamer and Fear also will have a bit of troubles come, let's say, the last stage of the race on those worn hard tyres. But like I said, the likes of Paris and Ruben, when they get on those mediums, I think it will be quite exciting at the end. Yeah, uh, abso absolutely. So your current top 10 uh, as, as follows. Now, in terms of the pit stop situation, uh, the top six who haven't pitted, they will start on the hearts. So it's Paris, Ruben, Aero, Nardi, Ignaz, Raikkonen, Sparks, Walters, Te Alonso, and for uh, your top 10, we have CRG Gamer just behind Fira in P11. And then we got the likes of Zokolat, Jordan, Nicholas Mateo and Benny making up the top 15. But I think there's going to be quite a lot of overtaking going on as we reach, you know, sort of the uh, cutover point for particularly the hard tyres in about, you know, five or six laps time. But uh, Sparks is now on the back of Raikkonen and Ignaz. So I think this is going to be a battle to watch them because Sparks is the net leader at the moment with the six drivers ahead of them yet to stop. So let's see what Sparks can do then. Raikkonen will, of course, have DRS of the car ahead. So it may be a case of Raikkonen of pass or B pass for him. But look at that. Sparks has a little bit more straight line speed, but not able to pass at the moment. So this could corner. If these two, if, if Sparks can't get ahead of these two cars because of Raikkonen getting DRS, but still not able to get... Oh, and a huge... I just say that, but a huge lockup of the tyres... From Raikkonen, nearly going straight into the wall, and it always oh, all over the place. And this may give Sparks half a chance. You don't often see oh. overtakes into where the Singapore sling used to be before it was reprofiled. But uh, Raikkonen able to maintain position. But that will give Ignaz a bit of breathing space. But look at that now. Raikkonen is now out of DRS. So if that's maintained, this will give Sparks a great opportunity at the start of the next lap to get ahead into P6. Yeah, critical stage of the race was spot. You don't want to lose your front wing, lose the race on, let's say, a car that needs to pet, and you're not really racing. So, yeah, Rockin not doing anything wrong. He's just doing his own race, and it's so tricky to ever take it street circuit. So, yeah, Sparks really has to get the job done with Walters was behind and, and the guys behind. You know, he's got quite a bit of a buffer, but there's obviously Falcon Alonso will be doing the two stops. So, yeah, Sparks has got a little bit of time, 
But obviously, come the end of the race, he'll be racing like sort of Paris. So, you know, he can't wait forever. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's got to... Scott's train, but to be fair to Raikkonen, he had a pretty solid sector three, and he's now within DRS again. He won't get it on the main straight, though. So, no, Sparks isn't close enough. The exit of turn 23, you know, I think in games gone by, uh, Singapore, turn 23, often you'd see more overtakes at turn one, but usually you only get it when there's a huge disparity in tyres because, you know, they can take the corner, the corner so fast now in these modern cars. There's not really much of an opportunity to overtake at turn one because they're just not able to follow closely enough. Yeah, so can he get close enough? Right, and obviously harvesting energy, hence why his light's flashing, but he can't get close enough and spark. So yeah, he's going to be really frustrated as he looks to, look to make a move up the inside, but no, Reichland covers it off nicely, locks up again, which will allow Sparks to maybe get a better run into the next corner. Yeah, so we get a nice helicopter shot, spectacular scenery, one of the commerce centres of the world, Singapore. Now, can Sparks? No, Sparks being sensible. You know, he's on for solid points at the moment to continue CRG's excellent start to this series. So he doesn't want to make a a rash decision here and make a lunge, damage his wing, as uh, Connor talked about earlier. But he gets an excellent exit out of the hairpin, I have to say. And this may give him half a chance here. It's going to go round the outside. This is not a move you often get, but he's going to try and sweep round the outside of the Alfa Tauri of Raikkonen. And he does in superb fashion. Absolutely clinical from Sparks to get up to P6. A nice, huge race in water as well. He'll be thinking, well, I've got to get past this IGK driver quickly. Otherwise, Sparks is going to be disappearing off into the distance. Yeah, a crucial move there for Sparks Reichen. Had a bit of a reputation in PSGL F2 last game, so I think he had that in the back of his mind, but patience was key there. You know, he got through cleanly, and now we can get on with the next fight ahead. Oh, Reichen having a big moment. Snap of oversteers. He went on to the power, and that, now he's losing time. And look, he, even with DRS, he's got no acceleration because of that poor exit. Here comes Walters. Up to P7 he goes. And he's going to continue his pursuit of Sparks. They're just kind of trying to side their way through the traffic now. And now Sparks, up next for Sparks, will be uh, Ignaz in the McLaren up ahead. You'll have to remind me uh, which uh, <laughs> which squad they belong to. Uh, Bertanos. Oh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Similar. <laughs> yeah. Similar. There you go. And uh, yes, yeah, so they've, they've, they've made solid contributions to this series so far. Uh, without, you know, threatening the top positions in the races. But, you know, Ignaz, he's had a solid first since so far. So, you know, on the faster tyre at the end of the race, he could be threatening for, you know, the top 10 positions uh, with the pace he'll have at the end of it. But there's quite a gap now to the top four. So the likes of Ignaz and Raikkonen, they don't seem to have the pace of the other f four hard runners in front of them. Um, so, you know, I think the top four, Paris, Ruben, Aero, Nardi, they're the ones who are going to be threatening the likes of Sparks and Waters possibly at the end. Yeah, potentially. I think there's a bit of a blockage now with the McLaren and Gamer. Then obviously we've got the likes of Chocolat, Jordan and Nicholas Bateragos behind. So those guys behind, those uh, Gamer and McLaren, are on fresher hard. So they can't make the most of the hards because of these two guys ahead, which is going to leave Paris, Ruben and co. to be really attacking this point. So I think the likes of Walters and Sparks should be OK because they've really broke, let's say, the blockage. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and now oh, a pit stop. Here we go then. Aero uh, making a pit stop. Lap 17. Is this about the right time for those mediums, Connor? Yeah, a little bit early, but obviously getting that lap in early will definitely get a nice undercut, perhaps on Ruben and Paris. So, yeah, a good call there from Aero. I really like the aggressive nature of Kisu. We have been great this series. So, Shockler's got a great run out the final corner on Gamer Mark. Oh, he does indeed. But not, not close enough. Yeah, that, that move into turn one always very difficult due to the nature of the final corner of the dirt here, and it's quite a short run, but you've really got to set them up. But obviously, Gamer's got a DRS and the McLaren ahead, so it's going to be really tough. As nice. Aero comes out 6.5 behind Nico. So keep yeah. an eye on that gap. Well, here comes Sparks then trying to get around the outside of Ignaz. But to be fair, Ignaz, oh, breaking very late. Ooh. Sparks goes off the track. Mm. Down the inside he goes. Ignaz going to try and come yeah. back on him. I think Sparks is, yeah, Sparks is laying back for it. I think he recognised he went off track to get that move done. But this has allowed oh. Walter to get all over the back of him. And this could end in tears here. And this has allowed Alonso to get all over the back of of this train. Alonso earlier on before Sparks and Walters got to the back of Raikkonen and Ignaz. They were three seconds ahead of Falcon, but all this time they've lost in the traffic. This is really going to play into the hands for the likes of Aero, Paris, Ruben and Nardi. But you have to think, Connor, that Raikkonen and Ignaz will be pitting very soon. Yeah, Sparks to... down the inside Ignaz. again, at least trying it, but he's, don't think he's, no, he's not going to have the traction. He just can't get the move done at the moment. But don't forget, he doesn't have that fresh hards, relatively speaking. 
in terms of tyre difference. He's only got five lap fresher tyres than Ignaz. So he's not going to have that ultimate performance difference. And neither is Walters for that matter. But yeah, this is going to be really frustrating for Sparks because this could potentially make a, a victory for for you know a non-TRD driver quite possible. Yeah, this is mental because Aero's taken nearly two, three seconds out of Nico. So, Sparks being held up is crucial for the, the end of the race. But Sparks is going to be so slow on these one cars at the end. So, he has to make the move done. But Ignaz is doing his own thing. He can defend. He can do what he wants. He's defending within the rules. It's annoying if you're in Sparks' position. I'd be very pissed off, to be honest. But <laughs> it's, it's racing. It is entertaining. And yes, it is racing for us. And uh, now Sparks, oh, you could tell the body language, very frustrated customer on that purple helmet but he's got the inside and surely this is going to be the moment he gets the move done oh i'll tell you what though ignaz is still trying to defend oh. it They're both, he's off the track ignaz has surely got to defend no he's still trying to come back at him but no sparks gets the move done in the end and surely ignaz will not have the tires now and look at that aero has undercut all three drivers ahead that were ahead of him nardi ruben and paris so and he's out of the arrest as well and now he's rapidly catching nick and so Aero is going to be leading the assault against those who will be going a long way on those hearts and has sparks with all that battling. Has that really made life difficult to him? And Waters has got past Ignaz straight away. So obviously Ignaz used up so much of his size defending against sparks lap after lap. He had nothing left to defend from the NWS driver. Yeah, and just to put it in perspective, Aero is now 5.5 seconds off the lead. So, you know, I know he's got a lot of traffic, but Aero is just a second, over a second lap faster than the leader. The mediums are flying, but obviously overtaking is another story. But Aero is now on the back of Nico, having been five, six seconds behind. So, yeah, the mediums are flying, Mark. There. Look, just look. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, and uh, just to illustrate that, we've got the, the gap to leader up there, and it's under five seconds now Aero has to spark. So, don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We may have had technical difficulties and all that stuff, but there is going to be a lot of action in the closing stages of this race as uh, Ignaz finally pits along with Falcon. Um, as Falcon ended up on a two-star strategy, I'm not sure. Yeah, he went for the soft medium, medium, and I think he's going to be too far back to really make the most of it. But there's what's keeping on this train. Look, he stayed out. The McLaren stayed out. No, oh, it's the same one, sorry. Both yeah. McLarens are being traffic jammed today. I'm getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here comes Aero then on the back of your your man, Nicholas Mateo. I mean, I have to say, Nicholas Mateo just sounds like such a nice Formula 2 driver name. I don't know why. It just rolls off the tongue nicely. But Aero then, ooh, getting forced off. Nicholas Mateo, this is full position now. All of these guys have pitted. But look at this train. This is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is like a 2017 McLaren. It's going so slowly through some of these corners. CRG Gamer has been staring at the back of that for virtually... The whole of this stint. He's got to go to the end, don't forget. Zokolat just behind. We saw him earlier. And he's going to have a tyre advantage at the end. A significant one. Jordan as well. Mm. So, Aero, he's got the tyre advantage. But picking his way through this train, it's going to be Look so for difficult. Paris. Look for Paris around the outside of Aero. Side-by-side action. Both oh, using my. DRS. Well, I don't know where Paris came from. But Paris has a lot of pace on his medium to go. So, like, oh, slight contact oh. with the B BDG driver. That was pretty brutal. But no damage by the looks of it. Oh, he's oh. going to... Oh, no, that is... No, no, that is not... No, that's unfortunate. And there is yellow flags. Oh, dear. Nicholas Mateo punted off. Uh, that was... Uh, there was nothing romantic about that driving by by Paris. Awful stuff there. Yeah. And uh, although it looks like he may have got away without damage, it wasn't the hardest contact. But yeah, I, th I think to be fair, he wasn't trying to get ahead of Nicholas Mateo. I think he was honestly trying to get past Aero, but he just outbraked himself into the side of the Renault. So that is a uh, that is a shame, particularly for Nick Mateo, who's lost several positions. And uh, well, I don't know what happened to Aero. Did Aero sort of get caught up in that? Because he's now behind um, Ruben and Nardi, so he may have had to take avoiding action or something like that. Yeah, he's got he's got damage on my screen. So yeah, disaster for Aero's team orders at VSR. Brett's got the team orders that go in, and Paris is passed through Georgia. And Paris up to P6. Indeed, but. He may have something coming to him on the stewards after the race if, if, it's, if it is reported. But he'll have to forget about that now, refocus, because now he's got three cars ahead of him. But all of that scrapping is probably going to be pleasing to the likes of uh, Sparks and Waters because they'll be thinking, OK, you guys scrap as long as possible, destroy your tyres, and we'll just bring this all home at the end. Yeah, I mean, if Paris somehow gets through these cars, he's going to have a right good go at the top two. So oh, he's going for Paris a move of the hairpin. Slight contact. Zokolat was really struggling for grip over the Anderson Bridge, but recovers at the hairpin. Bacan, Paris, Paris going to, you know, the inside is covered. Yeah, and I think he's sort of thinking, yep, I did. Oh, oh really oh, deep no. by Zokolat. Oh. 
and, and Paris goes through Zocolo with a <laughs> very deep. He had defended that right, but I think he just missed his breaking point completely, and that allows Paris to get ahead. So VSR's Paris up to P5 for the time being, and uh, Falcon Nardi now on the back of Zocolo as well. So Gamer still can't get ahead of this McLaren. I mean, he could have been fighting for a podium because it seems to me if Gamer could have got past Fira earlier, I think he would have had way more pace in the drive here. But he just doesn't seem to have the straight line speed um, to get ahead of him, particularly on the Raffles Boulevard. Paris now all over the back. So the next few laps could well be crucial now for Paris, whether he's going to be able to catch the leads because now it's a 4.2 second gap between the top two to the man currently in P3. Yeah, and sorry, I was I was watching uh, basically Ruben put Jordan in the wall. So that's what I was ooing and ahhing about. I mean, I don't know what Ruben was playing out there. He just put Jordan in the wall. So, yeah. <laughs> Game up the inside. Oh, oh. More contact. oh, look at this. Paris is going to try and go oh. through the middle of them. Free, oh, free, yeah. free oh, wide no. going to this corner. Oh, goodness me. Well, he has actually gone. He's done it. I have the needle stuff. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Fear is round. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> It's, it's oh, all kicking off. <laughs> and thank goodness it's ghosting, otherwise that would have been a horrible accident. But yeah, I, I don't what? think I've ever seen an overtake where someone's not been on the inside or the outside and overtaking two cars at that particular corner. So that was uh, interesting stuff from Paris there. <laughs> but to be fair, he, the opportunity, it was like Moses and the parting sea. The opportunity came there and then uh, he, he took it. So he's now got to get after. He's on very fresh medium still. So he's got to get after him. But look at that. Falcon Nardi all over the back of Zocola. And he's, um, you know, had a clean sort of path through all this uh, proverbial <laughs> carnage. So he's now sort of, said, my goodness, Zocola, he's really struggling on the rear. So I don't know if he's got temperature problems or something, because every time he's going on the power of the corners, the, the back end is twitching, running low, lower down for some of the other drivers, perhaps. Yeah, well, to be fair to Nardi, there's not many serious complaints against him, because I know Paris and Ruben, and maybe a couple of other gamers as well, will all be in the serious office, because there's been some contact as uh, Nardi using his airs, using the overtake up the inside. Oh, oh my one. goodness. Well, I have to say, Zocolat was oh. very good. on. Oh, here comes Ruben oh. trying to get through there, because <laughs> Nardi outbreaks himself a little bit uh, on on turn two, after, you know, taking avoiding action from Zocolat. And Zocolat. He's made one move, and oh, technically he made a. Okay, he's kind of kept a central position there. So I think that's just on the edge of uh, legality there in terms of uh, the the moves. But here comes Nardi again. How close these drivers are! But look at that, Paris now 3.2 seconds. He's taken a second out of the top two, the last oh. lap. So oh, and, and oh, he's gone so deep, Nardi. Oh. And and I think a wry grin from Connor as <laughs> as BDG Ruben moves up to P5. And that, but they are really scrapping here. But Ruben and Nardi, they've got to try and get ahead of this racing point of Zocala. The SUV driver is, is now quite a train behind him. Yeah, well, at least for Ruben, Jocla's very vulnerable. So he's alone, he's got no DRS. So Ruben has to make the move, but he has to make it clean. Oh, look at that. Little Mansell switcheroo. Oh, oh no, contact. Oh, no. Oh. And w w watch out for Falcon. <laughs> Falcon, no, you, you cannot go around the outside there. Surely, no, he, he backs off. But look at that. Ruben gets the move done here. That was very aggressive driving there. That was almost F2 style there. Just sort of <laughs> sticking a wheel in. And over the, oh, my goodness. And Ruben, I thought he was going to spear into the wall, but he, he, he come, got it under control again. So Ruben now up to P4. Two seconds now, the gap between the leaders. So we're going to get the, the intervals back on because I do believe Paris is now in DRS range of the top two. But I'm going to keep an eye on this battle just for a few more moments. Can Falcon get ahead of Zocolat for the time being as, as Raikkonen actually moves up to P13? Just have a li little look at that battle. Yeah, Raikkonen's moved up another position. Let's just have a look at Paris for a second. Paris within DRS. Wolfsis is not in DRS range of Sparks. Here, come, here comes VSR member Paris. Can he get the move done here? No, not for the time being. Let's have a look at Falcon quickly. Oh my God, it's side by side on the narrow part of Raffles Boulevard. And I think, yeah, no, he's going to get that move done. Sweeps around the outside with ease, with the assistance of ERS and, of course, the DRS. Oh. Yeah, a bit of a moment there for Chocolat on the exit. Those hard tyres aren't working yet. The reverse strategy is the one to go. And Paris is now behind Wolfsburg. But the thing with Paris, he's probably going to get a penalty. So he needs to really overtake both of them and extend at least a five-second gap as he goes oh, up the inside of Wolfsburg. Oh, it's going inside, yeah. Well, you do see moves there sometimes. Generally speaking, you do need a tyre advantage to even attempt to move there. And oh, well, look how Welts has he, he slowed down. He's just letting him pass. Yeah, Didn't fight flexible. it. He, you know, 
knows he's on for a good podium or a top four guarantee. So, yeah, experienced uh, driving because he knows that Sparks is going to defend harder because it's for the victory. Well, in theory, anyway. But we'll see. Yellow's in sector two, and that is IGK Armoto. He has gone off there at turn eight, or turn nine, I should say. Don't often see drivers going off there, so must have had contact with someone, I would imagine. Uh, but we're going to switch our attention to the battle for the lead here in this TRS F1 round three here at the Marina Bay Circuit, Singapore. Yellow's in sector two again. I think that's just the IGK driver still recovering. We've only had run retirement in this race, which I do believe, Colin, is the first actual retirement we've had in this series. Yeah, it is indeed. We rarely do have retirements because obviously it's point strength position. And interestingly enough, we've not actually not had a safety car yet in either the PSG Esports Cup or this event either. So, testament to the points. No, that, that is very interesting. Sparks um, using ERS ahead. He's got 8%, only 11% on Paris. So, they're, they're using every little bit of the battery they have available. I'm not really caring about storing it at the moment. So, Walter's in a solid P3 at the moment. He is being caught, though, by Ruben and Falcon. So... Looking good for Brutal Democracy, a possibility of a, a podium in the works here. Yeah, well, we'll see you know, what happens in the latter stages. And interesting that Paris actually does have a three second time out and see where Sparks has nothing. So, yeah, Paris will have to overtake him and obviously extend the gap to at least three seconds pending any students investigations. But I think it's just a matter of time because these medium tyres look a lot faster. Yeah, it looks like they are going off pretty quickly. As we just saw a bit of scrapping between Leon Bentley and Ter Alonso. Oh! Side by side action, Mark. Sparks and Blaz Paris on the, oh, the outside. Paris on oh, Sparks. Oh, here we go. Oh, and he leads, leads there. So, and he does. Couldn't switch quickly enough. A little bit rusty, <laughs> this old thing, but the Paris into the lead uh, with, with six to go. And uh, you have Sparks. Sparks in P2 at the moment. But now, look at that. Ruben on the back. And yeah, it looks like the alternate strategy is really coming to the fore. And oh, oh, Walters. oh, Walters with a huge moment. He saves it, but it's not going to save him. He is going to lose P2. As uh, Ruben says, thank you very much. And now now pursues uh, after CRG Sparks. So it looks increasingly li likely at the moment that it's not going to be a third win for CRG. But if Sparks were to finish second, and if Paris could get a penalty for that huge incident earlier on, then, uh, mm -hmm. well, he could still be on for it. So Ruben, he's going to have to get the get the move done. So in terms of the penalty situation, Connor, how are we looking for the top five at the moment? Uh, I'll have a quick gander, but I know Paris has got three seconds and Sparks has no penalties yet. Ruben has uh, a couple of warnings. Uh, Walter's also with one warning. So it's just uh, it's just Paris with a penalty in the top five, Mark. Just Paris. Well, that, that that's, uh, that's very impressive stuff. As we see Falcon going side by side with, with Raikkonen. Oh, taps the rear of the, of the Alpha Tori just a little bit. Uh, but carries on. Uh, Going to go back to Falcon Nardi because Falcon Nardi now all over the back of Waters. They've gone a long way on those hards. 20 laps on those hards now. And, you know, they're going to be reaching sort of the, the limit of their, their worth, really. And uh, up ahead, Ruben has already caught the back of Sparks. So just the pace difference is absolutely insane. Two second gap for Paris already. Uh, I mean, the, the hards are over two seconds a lap slower in quality trim than the softs. But in race trim, it seems like they're about a second a lap slower than, than the mediums as well. So, yeah, <laughs> being on soft, soft to hards, Connor, clearly is not the strategy in terms of winning the race today. No, clearly not. I think Paris, I know there was a bit of a uh, few collisions and contacts, but those contacts were crucial of getting some of the cars out of the way because he's made light work of them and he's obviously extending his lead. And to be honest, as it, at this pace, Paris will be taking the win. Penalties or not, stewards or not, Paris looks to be the man to take the win today. But here comes BDG Ruben. It's going to be a great moment for Brutal Democracy because Ruben goes up to P2 and if he stays in P2, that will be Brutal Democracy's best result in the series so far. So excellent work there as Nardi has moved up to P4 as well. So Nardi now will be trying to demote Sparks off the podium. It would be the first time in this series, if things stay as they are, stewards or not, that CRJ have not had a driver on the track. But it's still a very solid haul points for CRG as it stands with with both their drivers in the top 10. That's what it's all about, getting both your drivers in the top 10, because that's where all the best points are. 
points are awarded all the way to 20th in this series. But if you can get your drives regularly in the top 10, it gives you a great chance of getting the series. We've still got seven races to go in this series after this one, of course. And we'll discuss that. The next race is after that. Falcon Nardi now all over the back of CRG Sparks. He got the pole position. Unfortunately, though, starting on the softs has not really... It's not really works out for him, but he's going to defend for all he's worth. But you just see the superior grip that these relatively fresh mediums have against the old hards. Sparks taking as much speed as he dares on those old, old hards through the final corner, but it's le left him absolutely nothing to defend with. Nardi up to P3. Now, let's see uh, if Ruben is making any impression. He's actually slowly catching... Um, Paris. Now, because Ruben has no penalties, Connor, and Paris has mm -hmm. one three-second penalty, Ruben is on for the win at the moment. Yeah, well, I was on the team radio in the interval just to tell him what the situation is. So, yeah, he's aware of the situation and, yeah, he's pushing as hard as possible because he knows what's off the stake. But like I said, I think it will be a busy, busy stewards' office. So, even if VSR or ourselves take the win on track, I do feel that the stewards will perhaps be deciding what's going to happen. Yes, well, hopefully it is decided on track. But it may be decided on track without the stewards involved if Paris simply has more penalties than, than Ruben. But we shall see. Falcon unable to get past a name changer at the moment. He's having a quietly decent race for, for SHZ, the highest runner. Aero was really in, in the shout for a win, but then got caught up in an incident that we saw early on between Nick Mateo and Paris. And he, he kind of could well have been where Ruben and Paris are now fighting for the win. Yep, certainly was the case. I'm saying people saying that Ruben has a penalty but on my screen oh no actually to that Ruben does have a penalty in the actual incidents he doesn't have it on his driver thing so yeah Ruben does have a penalty mark actually so ah, yeah. okay so honours even on the penalty front with um with four to go at the end of this one Paris starts lap 28 here as a uh, look at this He's trying to go around the outside <laughs> it's Falcon you don't often see moves here and he gets the move done and right behind him is IGK Raikkonen, the highest running IGK driver. Well, this this is, for IGK, this is, I mean, this is such a far cry from what was. They look so quick being led by Gil in the opening race. But it's just off the off the track shenanigans has just really affected them, hasn't it? It's going to take, it could take them a few races to recover from all that. Yeah, I think it's certainly, well, certainly no offence to Raikkonen. You know, he's not one of their strongest drivers. He's, he's like the manager, he's the owner. So, But the fact he's P11, beating up some top drivers, he's on for 10 points. So, you know, Raikkonen's doing a great job considering he's like me racing, basically. You know, <laughs> we shouldn't be racing. So, yeah, Raikkonen's doing quite well. He's on with some good points, like like you said. And here comes Raik. Speaking of Raikkonen, into the top 10 he goes. Fresh mediums against the old hards. And gets the job done. 1 minute 34, 903. We, we saw VSR Jordan absolutely obliterate the fastest lap just now. And Aero is also pitting for soft, so I think he'll have fancy a punt at the fastest lap as well. But now we focus our attention for the battle for the lead. It is Paris. He has three laps to go after this one, trying to get the car home. But look at this. Ruben has definitely shown more pace on these mediums at this stage. He's now closed in 1.1 seconds. So even though they've both got a one three second penalty each, he could well still decide this on track. Uh, I'm sure you'll have every finger and foot crossed for, for Ruben to get the job done here. Yeah, certainly. And obviously, if these guys start battling... Oh, big not, slide. Big slide. Yeah. If these guys start battling, you know, nobody has got no penalties and he's only 3.3 off the lead. So maybe Falcons could be taking their first win in the series. Yes, well, I think I think we can safely say, um, unless Falcon gets a... Unless they all suddenly get about six or nine seconds of penalties, that we are going to get... A, a new team winning in this series. CRG won the first two rounds at USA in Britain, but I think we are going to get a new winner here. And it's going to, it, it is VSR versus BDG versus Falcon for the race win here at Singapore. Yeah, and Nardi looks the fastest out of the, the top three at the minute. Ruben's slightly closing on Paris, but Nardi's now nearly within three seconds. He's just on the cusp of that three second barrier for the lead of the race. You know, Nardi, he's been very clean. He's been very consistent. Maybe not had the outright pace, but he's just got his head down and got the job done. And he's now within three seconds of Paris Burrell. So, yeah, Nardi is on course to take the win for Falcons right now. Well, I've seen Nardi race plenty of times. He, he, is, he does often have races like this, those sort of quiet, calm, measured races. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, at the end of the race, he's, he's getting a podium or something. So it's, a, it's not an untypical performance from Nardi. 
it can be. I think it, it's fair to say, Connie, he's not the most spectacular driver to watch in terms of like, you know, wheel to wheel action, but he does often get the job done. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. It's not about, you know, getting fans. It's about getting points on the board. I think Nardi looks to be the man to beat. If he doesn't get a penalty, he'll be taking the race victory. So let's see how it all plays out. I'm sure Ruben and Paris will want to settle it out on track regardless of P2, as it sounds. Yeah, but and there's still plenty of time. Quite easy to get penalty here, here, particularly at some of those tricky corners in Sector 2 and particularly Sector 3. We have to attack the curbs so much. Uh, potential for corner cutting. But look at this. Ruben now within DRS of Paris. So Paris, you know, look, the win, looked like the win on track at least was sewn up, but brilliant pace from Ruben to close the gap onto him. May not get a chance to overtake this, but certainly on the final lap corner, he may have a chance to take the win on track at least. Yeah, I think, yeah. hopefully we can get close enough to attack Paris. But, you know, Paris, as we've seen, is very, very aggressive and he knows what he's doing in terms of defending. But to be fair to he's, he's really launched it on a couple of occasions. Very Daniel Ricciardo esque. So perhaps we'll have a bit of a last lap drama between Paris and Bill for the win on track. But it looks to be Nardi's day under the lights so far. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, Going down the order a little bit, there are a few battles going on. Not too, not too close. Um, seen a battle between, well, actually, Waters has been uh, caught by Zokalat actually. So it looks like he's on 25 laps on those, on those hards, um, Waters. So may, perhaps he's possibly reached the, the very end of those of the tire forms. It's going to go down the order because we may see a move here for P14, and that is Fire who dives down the inside of Benny, and yeah, pretty comfortable move there. Much fresher mediums on, on him at the moment. Let's go back to the battle for the lead. Entering Sector 3 for the penultimate time. Spectacular scenery here at Singapore, all lit up. Um, I mean, uh, I know a, a couple of uh, of our fellow commentators in the community have actually been to the Singapore Grand Prix. And they say it is quite the experience. But I can't imagine how, for the drivers, how difficult this race is physically, but also the humidity. It is usually the most hum humid race of the year, um, which, of course, won't be affecting them in that way but they will be sweating no doubt a little bit Paris now half a second gap ahead of Ruben so I think Ruben is going to get one shot at this heading out towards the Rubens Boulevard Raffles Boulevard I should say it could be the Rubens Boulevard at the end of this race here comes Paris getting a decent exit to be fair off off turn four and I don't think it's going to be enough chances here so for the time being, Paris maintains the lead. Falcon is within the within the three second gap he needs to win the race on track for Falcon. Yeah, and no more penalties have came up on my screen. Yeah, two warnings for Nardi still. So he's doing all he can to get this victory mark. Oh, two warnings though. He's on a knife edge here. One mistake, and he's not close enough to take to take advantage. He's going to have to just, you know, keep it within the three seconds. But he's got to keep cool as. Um, Interesting to see how Paris and uh, Ruben took quite different lines into the hairpin there. And uh, overtake, actually, he's got no ERS, so he's not going to be anywhere near Paris. So I think that's the last realistic overtaking opportunity gone. As VSR Jordan gets a time penalty. Uh, a miserable race for Jordan in, in many ways. But, uh, you know, one VSR driver is about to take the checkered flag here, while the other one's in P15. But points mean prizes. But here comes Ruben then. Oh, huge! Oh. oh, Ruben's had a huge moment. Huge moment. He's going to drop away from Paris. He's not going to drop three seconds, though. But he's going to be P3 of the very late. Here comes Paris then to take the checker flag, to take, take it on track. But I think it's going to be Falcon who takes the victory here in round three of TRS F1. What a performance from Falcon Nardi. Can Sparks gain anything? No, he's going to finish P4. Waters in P5. Zocolet in P6. And crossing the line just ahead of Nick Mateo. A CRG gamer, good points for Comrade Gaming, and uh, a very good day for Brutal Democracy with P3 and P8. Falcon completing a fine day with uh, P9 for Te Alonso and IGK Raikkonen making up the top 10 as uh, the rest of them come out. Name changer Leon Bentley, Ignaz, and Fire Air. Still quite a few drivers coming in, and there's yellow flags in Sector 3, and I think that is uh, Jopro's gone off. But let's ride on board then with the race winner. It is it is Falcon. Brilliant stuff from him in this particular race. He's done an absolutely brilliant job for Falcon, Connor. 
Yeah, I think, you know, he didn't really attract many headlines throughout the race. Like, so Ruben and Paris were in the wars. But it was just not. He kept his head. He kept it cool. You know, he's one of the older drivers on the grid. And, yeah, I think he just proved crucial today. No penalties, no incidents that we saw anyway. And, yeah, a great drive there from Nardi to take the win. Get Falcons on Falcons on the board there with a great, you know, 35 points for those guys. Obviously, Falcon, uh, Tay Alonso in P9 as well. So, yeah, credit to Nardi. Stunning throughout, consistent. And, yeah, got the job done. Well, something you don't often see in Formula One, a Mercedes winning a race in 2020. But uh, Falcon Nardi, well-deservingly getting driver of the day. I, th- I think uh, he, he, he was the one who made the alternative strategy work the best because he didn't have the time penalties and he, you know, kept his head. He didn't make any rash mistakes. Could be penalties for Paris later, so he may not finish on the podium. So could still see a podium for CRG Sparks later on, but uh, that is up to them, of course. As the champagne is sprayed on there. And uh, yeah, three new drivers on the podium. That is always good to see in a series like this. Yeah, that's always great to see. You know, but you know, to be fair to CRG, they still get the job done. You know, Sparks is up there and Game is up there as well. They got good points and probably their championship lead is in still good tact because I think they outscored Shizu and their nearest rivals as well. So yeah, I think the series are going to be busy. But yeah, CRG perhaps didn't win the battle today, Mark, but they're certainly winning the war. Absolutely. Well, here's your provisional result then for round three of TRS F1 from Singapore. Falcon Nardi takes the victory here from Paris for. VSR, Bruto Democracy's Ruben finishing the podium, Sparks in fourth, Walters in fifth, a solid race for him, Zocolat in sixth for S2V, CRG, Gamer in seventh, BDG Nicholas in eighth, Falcons, Teo Alonso in ninth, tenth for Raikkonen, then the rest of the finishers, name changer, Leon Benley, Ignaz and Farron 13, 14, Jordan 15, Benny in 16th, Aero in 17th, Jopra in 18th, IGK, uh, Moti in 19th and your only retirement in the race first retirement of the series Gavin Tetero and there's something I've, we've quickly overlooked uh, Nardi started last he went from last to first in Singapore so wow bigger, bigger, wow. bigger kudos to him crazy wow he missed qualifying so but yeah, yeah mental I, 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 yeah obviously I didn't see any qualifying because we had all the technical issues but yeah that is uh, that is pretty insane um, just going to bring the candor up for you guys so, yeah, first of all, I just want to thank everyone for their patience tonight. Unexpected technical issues. Um, and then me having to learn how to <laughs> how to stream on, to, on uh, Trovo Live, which I've never done before in about five minutes. So, uh, I appreciate it. We got some good action in the end corner. That's the main thing. We saw, we saw the majority of the race. But I'm sure next time out, next week in Italy, we will have no such issues. Yeah, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll be all prepared and if... Oh, uh, George has a few issues. I think he actually got them sorted midway through, so that's positive. But at least we know that you're capable, and hopefully, I don't need to commentate and I can engineer. But no, it was quite a good race in the end, very action packed, and some interesting driving to say the least. But a good show, regardless. And we had some good viewers as well, so hopefully, everyone enjoyed it in the end. But yeah, hopefully, Monza, there's no issues, and we can really have a nice long stream. So, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be at the Temple of Speed next week. It's at least same time, 8 o'clock here on uh, the Brutal Democracy Trovo, Trovo channel. If you haven't already, please follow Brutal Democracy on Twitter and and on this very service so you don't miss any of the action. And looking ahead to the rest of Canada, we've got Belgium um, in November uh, alongside Monaco. Monaco I'm particularly looking forward to because it's <laughs> always aggressive stuff. Before we finish uh, with Bahrain, Vietnam and Japan and then Abu Dhabi to finish off the series in January. So, um, well, I wasn't expecting to be the lead commentator tonight. I think normal service will be resumed next week. But uh, thank you to you, Connor, stepping in to uh, be my yeah. co-com. And, uh, <laughs> no problem. And a uh, thank you to everyone watching tonight. And big congratulations to to uh, Falcon Nardi for taking Falcon Squad's first win of this TRSF1 series. Thanks for watching and see you next time.